Now go stay, dude. Uh, careful, give her some room. Whoa, and look at the reach on that thing. Woo. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's new series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go beyond the glass. Some missions are easy, others not so much. Today we're looking for the mangrove snake, and this mission was our hardest in Indonesia. Our search for the mangrove snake begins in the Borneo wetland. Okay, so I've actually seen this before in the Amazon. This is an illegal gold mine. What they do is they use mercury to separate the gold from the soil, and the problem is this causes a lot of animals to die. They find mercury poisoning in caiman and anacondas, and I bet you if you did the same thing here with the false gharials, you'd find the exact same results. It's just terrible. I mean, people have to make a living at the same time. It's not sustainable. This whole river is going to eventually crash if they keep that up, and this is people's food supply. I mean, besides just the animals here, which, People live from this river, sustain from it. If you just pour mercury in, it's a, it's a ticking time bomb. It's really sad. These wetlands are some of the oldest in the world. Borneo is home to some amazing biodiversity and really high endemism rates. Unfortunately, this island is being deforested rather rapidly and we're losing species all the time. We're now here in the thick of the river and we're watching all these overhanging branches for sleeping nocturnal snakes like Boiga dendrophilia dendrophilia, the gold ring cat snake, or as we in the States know them as mangrove snakes. Whoa. Whoa, watch out. This is what we mean by low hanging branches. Like they're literally on top of us. Directly behind me is a female orangutan. We've been totally skunked on snakes, and I don't even care because right now this experience is unmatched. She's absolutely amazing. The look in her eyes, the intelligence. Unfortunately, the Borneo orangutan is critically endangered, with under 100,000 of these creatures left in the world. This is mainly due to deforestation from palm oil plantations she actually makes eye contact. You know, it's not this ambivalent look. She looks you right in the eyes. There, there, there. That's, that's insane. You can help conserve orangutans by avoiding products that contain palm oil. So when it rains really heavy like that, it oftentimes forces snakes into deeper, more secure spots in the trees. I mean, imagine the branches are shaking, you're trying to sleep. So the snakes move deeper in. It makes them harder to see.
unfortunately, the rain ended our river quest. So we're gonna head inland to a rubber farm plantation, which allegedly has some mangrove snakes in it. So the area we're herping tonight is new to me. I've never been on rubber plantation. I've been on a lot of other different types of plantations, but never rubber. So this is a rubber tree. They've planted these trees in the forest here and they make these slits and the slits all run down to a little drop off into a cup. It is disturbed habitat, but some species thrive in that, especially cobras and uh, hopefully boigas or so we're told. Okay, so the looking for nocturnal snakes during the day by a boat didn't quite work out how we wanted to. Still was awesome, but we didn't find our target. So I've met up with Nathan with Indonesian Herping Tours. Nathan, good to see you again, man. And he's hooked us up with some locals who have an interesting technique I've never heard of. Uh, Nathan, could you explain to me the technique? So he's telling me if we leave a, a light or a lamp uh, near a source of water, uh, different types of snakes are gonna come. One of them, he, he describes it as being black with yellow bands. Black and yellow? I'm thinking could be a boy or that, a crate. That, yeah, that's Yeah, so he, he says we should leave it um, and then we should check on it in about an hour or so. Perhaps. So it's, it's like a moth attraction for yeah, snakes. Yeah, yeah. So this one's news to me, but apparently if we leave a lamp by a source of water, it's gonna attract the snakes like moths. Uh, again, I'm gonna say I've never heard of this, but I'm always open to see new techniques work themselves out, and we haven't found a cast snake, so what do we have to lose except a cheap lamp? So we're at this dam, and they're getting a stick, and they're gonna put the lamp over the water, and hopefully, snakes swim up. I could see where it would attract bugs, and the bugs would attract fish, and the fish would attract snakes, so. I guess that's it. We leave the lamp here, we continue on herping, and then our way back to the car, we'll check and see if the light trick worked. It's worth a shot. Devin, Devin, Devin. Okay, cool. Dude. I love these guys. These are awesome. So this is a slug eating snake. They're specialists, they eat slugs, that's it, hence the name. Look at that big head. You see that in slug eating snakes around the world. Uh, it's a commonality, it must have something to do with their diet. It looks like it'd be something rear fanged, but that's pretty much where the danger ends, is just the look of it. They're gentle little slug eaters, they're really cool. They don't offer to bite, just, oh man. If someone could get on commercially raising slugs, so they can captively breed these things, I, I, I'd sign up for that. Super cool find, something I always enjoy seeing. Not what we're looking for, but still a lot of fun. Go back to your slug eating. And that's when Devin, the cameraman, fell in a hidden well. Luckily, he stepped away unharmed, but the camera gear, not so much. So we have to travel back to Java to get some replacement parts. We'll continue the search there. Oh yeah, and that lantern trick, it didn't work. All right, Clarkson, catch it. Okay. Mango snake, dude. Oh, 
She's wedged right here on this. Uh, careful, give her some room. I'm worried once she gets cleared of one of these sticks, she's gonna swing back this way and her mouth will probably be open. Wow, look at her. <laughs> she is not happy with me right now. Whoa, and look at the reach on that thing. <laughs> okay, so the boiga is a trying so hard to find. It's pretty crafty in its natural habitat, as you can see. There's just so many layers of sticks that every time I try to work them on my hook instead, I almost got him. He finds an alternative. Okay. Whew. Okay. There you go. Okay. That took longer than expected. This is an amazing specimen. This is what we've been looking for for so long. So this is Boygodendrophilia. We call them mangrove snakes in the States. They're also known as gold ring cat snakes. What an amazing animal. These are beautifully colored snakes. They belong to the genus Boiga, the cat snakes. They're just awesome animals. Now, all Boiga are mildly venomous. Although they're not especially dangerous to humans, you should still take caution because there are those fluke occurrences. Devin, are you okay, man? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good, I just got my pants. All right. These guys are incredible. And now there's more and more people captive breeding them because it's an arboreal coulibrid that resembles a lot of your pretty arboreal vipers except it's less dangerous, legal in a lot more areas, and they actually reproduce pretty easily and they adapt to captivity well if you give them enough space. All right, she's pretty heavy. I've disturbed her enough. Now I'm gonna let this girl go, put her back in her bamboo, and take some measurements. Man. Yes. One note about the Boiga habitat, there's a lot of climbing room here. These are arboreal animals. They need a huge amount of room and lots of sticks to climb on. Give them that and they're pretty easy to please. Boiga are amazing animals, but remember, they are rear fanged and restricted in some cities and states. So be sure to check any local regulations before purchasing them. What a journey it's been. The culture, the people, the scenery. We've witnessed some heartbreaking moments too. If anyone watching doesn't think littering is a big deal, well look. And we've seen some magical animals I never thought I'd get to lay eyes on. Over the past 12 episodes, Zilla has taken us all around Indonesia in an effort to help give keepers a better idea about the ancestral homes of their pet animals. It's our hope seeing the beautiful world your pet animals come from might inspire folks to really try to go above and beyond and strive for the maximum they can do for the companion animals. Because these are the animals we love and they deserve our best. Beyond the Glass will be back in late 2019, and this year we take on Africa.